First, we want to thank you for introducing legislation on the Arctic a RCAC. That's a really great move, and we're happy with that. Uh, we would request that you amend it, however, to include representation by the village councils so that all the villages along the Arctic coast could have representation there besides the village corporation. So the village councils would be really important. Yeah, Mark, you know, we got this government-to-government working relationship, you know, in which President Clinton had uh, established exit of order consultation, so it should be in place on your plan, this consultation with the tribes. Let me, let me, if I can quickly respond to that one, if I can. Um, I appreciate it. We just had it finally marked up today, maybe included in the, the uh, uh, jobs, energy bill that's being discussed right now, but let me uh, be very frank to you, and, and I don't know, uh, Suzanne, feel free to copy the governor's press release. Please hand it out to every single one of the people there. I will go uh, do that. The governor, uh, the governor just less than 30 minutes ago um, came out against the Arctic RCAC. I would encourage every single one of you, uh, if you have the time and effort, uh, over the next day or so, to call his office and uh, explain uh, the somewhat confusion you might have on giving people the right to actually have a view on their resources. His complaint is that the state was not consulted. The state was consulted, but they're not the owners of the resource, period. They are the caretakers of part of our resource. That's it. Yes, good. Included with the, yeah. There's a bill that just came out. We just marked it up like an hour and a half ago or so, Bill, right? Um, it's called the Shore Act. Shore Act. Um, this will have about 80% of all, this was 70% of all our stuff on the Arctic, as well as many other issues around oil spill, technology development, and the RCAC for the Gulf. So it is now in there. And the other thing we did is solidify, uh, we think in the, final, in the final bill, it solidified the funding streams for Prince William Sound and Cook Inlet. Because remember, those were up to... So it could vary. Now it's an amount with an inflation adjustment every year. So that is now in these bills. So the Gulf, the Arctic, the Prince William Sound, and Cook Inlet with funding sources and or funding amounts identified plus inflationary clauses. Um, first you have to ask the fundamental question. And the fundamental question is, I don't think anyone in that room, in this room, disagrees that we need to be first and foremost off of foreign oil, period. Um, that is not in our best interest from a national security perspective. It's not in our national interest from a job security perspective. And to be very frank with you, as long as we continue to use oil and gas at the levels we do, um, we, we cannot have a blind eye to where we get it and our, their environmental standards. You know, when you go to Nigeria where we buy a chunk of oil, they have unbelievably disaster what's going on there. Uh, you know, Venezuela is not your most, uh, uh, has, it doesn't have the greatest standards when it comes to environmental protection. Or when you go to Iran, these are countries we buy oil from. So as you, you know, figure out how you get home tonight, um, we, we're buying oil from these people who have bad standards. So our first task has to be, how do we reduce foreign oil and diversify our base and set a target like we've done in Alaska by 2020, uh, 2025 to be 50 percent renewable. We have to have the same standard here or better, so we can get down the path here of getting off of foreign oil. Now, the gas component to me is a, a big chunk of our transition fuel. It's clean burning fuel. Of course, Alaska has a big chunk of it. The lower 48 now has a 100-year supply. Um, in a lot of ways, if we do that right, we can transition out of uh, oil to gas to a multi-source, meaning hydro, geothermal, solar, wind, new cell battery, biofuels, name the technology, it's all there. So I think as we do that, we have to be very careful how we do it as we make this transition, which will not happen, despite what uh, Al Gore says, it's not happening in 10 years. It's going to happen over a period of decades, but we can do it. I truly believe it. Um, and how we deal with our royalty share and our royalty taxes severance taxes on a national level, um, I think you're going to see a lot of discussion around how those revenue streams are collected and what's an equitable share for those developments onshore and offshore to the people of the United States. 
on two fronts. One would be to the Federal Treasury, and the second would be to the people affected. As you know, I've supported, if there's any development, which I know you folks are very um, have a view on this, but I want to make sure if there's any development on offshore in our state, that, that a third of that money, 37% actually, comes to Alaskans all the way down to the tribal level, uh, that no one is left out from sharing that revenue stream. Uh, it should not just be poured into the federal treasury for who knows what, but it should be utilized in the communities that are most affected. The Gulf of uh, Louisiana, the Gulf of Mexico is showing us why. 